everyone, welcome to an epoch edition of ARG Presents. I'm Amigo, don't wave that off. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who doesn't run on cassette. He's an 8-track sort of guy. I give you the Brent. Isn't that still literally a cassette? No, 8-track it, it's is a its real, own thing. Yeah, but it's still real to real. Listen, is the VCR tape a cassette? Yes. Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> if you joined us last week, we spun that crazy wheel. <laughs> Woo, we made the crazy deal. Woo. I mean, crazy, brother. Yeah, this was a good one. And this week, we will be taking a look at the, and I can't wait we're going to say it, the Epoch Super Cassette Vision. We are right? into the super groove. That's right. Super Cassette Vision, my friend. Now, would you call this the worst name console of all time? No. No, this is, I think Not this is Not while the it. Wii's walking around or the Wii U. We have a winner. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> also from Japan. So, before we kick this sucker off, what did you know about, the, and you probably don't know Jack's part about it now, but what did you know about the old Super Cassette Vision? I, I, nothing. <laughs> Well, there you go. Not <laughs> just quick, quick and to the point. I, you know, when I first when I first saw this, I literally thought it ran on cassettes. It All doesn't, right. right? But that so why call it the? This is as far away from a cassette as anything you could possibly get. Let me tell you something. As I go through my brief history and synopsis of this machine, you'll understand the importance of that name. Oh no, I understand. Oh, I, you can't possibly. Yes, understand. I did my research too. So, I see where it came from. Let's talk. It was of, still a bad idea. Let's talk about Epoch here uh, as a whole. All right, so Epoch, <laughs> worst wrestler ever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Epoch. So. And I didn't know this, Brent, but uh, Epoch is a company. It's still around, by the way. Whoa, yeah, really? Oh, yeah, man. But they started out in the uh, in the 70s, and they were making these. They made a, get this. I thought this was amazing. They made one of these Pong-type machines. Yes. <laughs> this sucker's totally wireless. Yep. It doesn't hook to the TV. Nope. It broadcasts over the channel. That's amazing. It is. And, and it's four-player, four right? And it ran on batteries. That's, that's a win. That's the four-player one? That I don't know how many players yeah. it was. That's a win right I, there. It, you see, I saw videos of people. I, I watched one of the commercials for yeah. it. And in the commercial, it's just one guy playing it. Yeah. And you're like, man, that's pretty awesome. But when you actually see it, it's like a, a an X. Yeah. And they're expecting four people to play around it? No. <laughs> listen, listen, in the 70s, their people were getting together. I guess so. You know, come together. That's what they were doing. They were having a good time. So... Epoch continued to make these kind of, uh, uh, you know, everyone was making these Pong machines and stuff back in the 70s. Epoch got them a little taste. So they were like, you know what? We can do better. And so, lo and behold, the original Epoch Cassette Vision came out in Japan in 1981. It did pretty well. Yeah. In fact, it pretty much ran the roost back in them days. Well, I don't know about that, it but did. it did well. What else was it going to compete against in 1981? Answer, nothing. Well, it, it was just a, in Japan. That's right. I yeah. said in Japan. So... It took over 70% of the market in Japan and sold over 400,000 units. Ooh. Now, uh, it did not have a lot of games. I looked at some of the games this thing. I think, I think they released uh, 11 games, 11 or 12 games. And <clears throat> these games, what could they best be described as? They were, I would say they're a slight step, they're like Channel F-ish. Yeah. Type game. Yeah, they were, you know. Yeah. They were, I, okay, I'll but they agree weren't with that. bad, man. They weren't bad at all. I didn't know? actually play any of them, but I saw them, and right. they definitely had that sort of blocky appearance. So they were doing <laughs> great. Doing, they, they did a pretty good job in that first run, and they're like, okay, we're cruising. Well, here comes a competition. Those jerks are always coming around. And so you've got uh, Nintendo, you've got <laughs> Sega, and of course you've got, I didn't realize, it, Casio had to get in there. I, that's probably going to get put on the wheel at some point. No, the no. Casio the Casio console. So they're in there whooping that tail, right? So Epoch's like, well, it's time to unleash our secret weapon, the Super Cassette Vision. And lo, it did come to be. So A year too late. This was released in uh, Japan in July 17th of 84. Yep. This got a EU release, if you will, but from what I was able to ascertain, this is a mostly France. It may uh -huh. be maybe entirely France. Um, now, you know, the the original Epoch released, like, it was like 50 bucks US for in... in, in uh, yeah, it was a cheap. I mean, it was like er, 81. So 50 bucks yeah. is real cheap. I mean, that's a heck of a bargain, I thought. 
This one was a little more expensive. A this lot one, more expensive. This one, not a lot. I mean, it was more, but I, so this released at 137 U.S. dollars. Almost triple the amount well, of the I first mean, it, one. But listen, it, they had a lot more going on this one. And, <clears throat> oh, they did. I and, agree. And, they were, and that was still cheap. Today, you're looking at about 340 dollar bill U.S. Uh, so, <laughs> and this also ran on a, uh, a cartridge based gimmick. You know, yes. despite the fact that it said cassette, none of these actually ran on what you would consider an audio cassette. No. Now, so. This thing had a uh, a, a eight bit NEC CPU. Okay, you had 128 bytes of RAM and and 4K four kilobytes of video RAM, and could hit resolutions up to and including 309 by 246 with 16 colors. And having played this thing, pretty good. Yeah, uh, this was going to be on. This was better than. The competition, effectively. No. Which, no, you got to hear me out. When I say the competition, I'm talking about it was better than the SG-1000 or the, uh, or the uh, uh, whatever the thing Casio had out. This trumped those. But it was in direct competition with the NES. That's true. It was actually, it could generate, mm. it, it, was, it was on par. It was no. on par. It was. No. No, and here's the thing. If this would have released prior to the NES, because the NES released about <laughs> a year earlier, in Japan, and this is very important, uh, it was they released about a year after the NES in Japan, which meant meh, they were well, done. Well, they did but, not, they weren't done. They no, okay. they were done. Well, you don't know the full facts. I'm looking at them. But they released a year before the NES in Europe. And which actually gave this thing a little bit of life. Well, what you had here was a machine that ended up selling. The first one, I know you'll, how you'll much recall, it sold. You'll recall, sold uh, around four hundred thousand units. Mm -hmm. This one sold between three and four, somewhere in that ballpark. So not yeah. quite as many, but that's still pretty <clears> good, <throat> you know. It's okay. Um, and they had six. They had uh, uh, now this got licensed to be released in France under the Yeno brand. Y E N O. Yeah. You know? I don't know what uh, that is, but yes. You know, well, it's a brand. And then eventually they came out, and, I, and this, you know, it's funny, I've heard about this console for years, and right to this exact point, I didn't know what it really was, but now I do, because this show, they released a Super Lady Cassette Vision. Yes. Which was a pink version for the, for the ladies, or any gents that were so inclined, I like the color pink, uh, and uh, it came alongside the game Milky Princess, yes. enough said. Uh, that was the pack end. Yeah, and it also had like a carrying case, which actually looked pretty sharp. I saw yeah. it with all the cassettes in it. It yeah. looked pretty good. It, 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 and by cassettes, we mean cartridges. Yeah, yeah. Anytime we say cassette, when we're referring to the Super Cassette Vision, yeah. we actually mean cartridges, like proper plug-into-your-console cartridges. That's right. Now, let's talk about the actual unit itself. All right. Now, the unit itself comes with, uh, it's got some interesting bits on it. You've got your reset button, the pause. You've got a uh, on-off switch. You've also got a keypad. Uh, on the actual on console. the console, which actually yeah. that's probably not a that's not the worst idea. No, I like it. The joysticks come. There's a little house for them, sort of like the uh, uh, what was it? the uh, well, sort of like the Coleco, Coleco but this yeah. one's much better house. Oh yeah. Now here's the downside, and they're two button controllers. That's good. Downside is hardwired in the machine. Yes. I'll lie, your Odyssey two, never a good move. Never good. This thing was actually ahead of the curve because. In Japan, this thing had a an RGB port on the back that you could hook up the SCART, which is that's great. That's crazy. Now it also had RF out. Now the European model, at least some of them, only had the SCART, which makes sense. Well, not really, because those that's early days for SCART. So a lot of You're people didn't have that's SCART. That's true. Um, Eighty-five. So I don't know if they released a cable that would have plugged in the RGB <clears> that would give you something else, but uh, for what I was able to ascertain, that's what you got. Now, uh, uh, one thing about the downfall of having the number pad on the actual console is the way they used it was to select and start games. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Well, that, that means you'd have to get up, type in what you wanted to do, and then go and sit down. That's, I think this console was meant to sit beside the player. Well, I mean, all the consoles are like that, though. You had to, no. you had to, all of them had reset and stuff that were like, uh, well, like yeah, that. You power it on, but then you, when you play your game... After your game is over, you die, whatever. You just hit start on the controller again and play again. This, you have to physically get up, go to the console, yeah. type in that you want to play again, and set back down. And I will say on the games that I tried, there was no, uh, you had to do that. You had to start, 
you had to use the keypad. Yeah. The keypad also had like a uh, Jaguar and television like overlays you could get it for the yeah. boots. But I don't, although I, I'll be honest, I don't know why you would care that much. I guess no. it might give it a little bit of flair. Well, I think I think the potential. I think that added potential. I think you could have had games that really integrated that in, had like secret yeah. passwords. Well, or I like puzzles. the idea that they had it. In fact, if you've ever played with the Jag and their crazy controllers. I think I'd rather had to keep it just on the Jag, and so I don't have to have all that crap yeah. on that mass of control. Oh, that control was an well, abomination. I mean, you can get used to it after a while. So, let's talk games. <clears throat> the Epoch <clears throat> Super Cassette Vision. They had uh, around 30 games released. Now, I, it's amazing, that I, but I did find out that there's a uh, there's quite a homebrew scene in Japan for the uh, Super Cassette Vision. Really? Yeah, they, I, mm. like I saw a dude playing like a Mario clone, and some, and, and like I think another thing I saw was like Dragon Warrior was one thing that they released. So they actually have released some stuff over there. So I'm not going to go over all these uh, games, but I'll go over a few of the highlights because some of these we've heard of before. So you've got, uh, of course, you've got your usual baseball games, stuff like that. A very popular game in here is called Punch Boy. <laughs> Enough said. Elevator Fight. That sounds pretty good. Uh, they had Boulder Dash on here, which is funny because Boulder Dash is, is a popular game in Japan. Yeah. <clears throat> Another one that really blew my mind. I didn't get to try it, but I'm going to. Miner 2049. Yeah, I saw that. And the Miner is a cute little guy in, in this. <laughs> We're watching the video. There it is right now. And uh, it's it looks it, and the little bad guys are kind of cute, too. So they cute it up, Miner 2049, which that's, I think that's interesting. Uh, you've got... Uh, um, you also had Mappy yeah. on there, Sky Kid. A few Pol arcade ports. Pole Position 2, they had a wrestling game. You know, so they had they had some games I've heard of. Of course, you gotta have Milky Princess on there. You know. <laughs> super, super super soccer. So it was the usual stuff you would expect to see on a console of its time. Sports games, some arcade ports, and then some other stuff. Right. Now, I did so you didn't get a chance to look through and try any of these other games? I uh, no, I looked at Almost everything, I think, uh, but I did definitely did not have time to play everything. Right, right. I th I thought I mean I went through and tried some of these things. I will say uh, uh, this is supported in in, in uh, mess and mame. Yeah, and also if you uh, really want to do a no frills play down, just roll over to arcade.org. Archive, archive. What did I say? Arcade, well, archive.org. That's right. Has uh, I believe all of them or next to all of them? They had all. They had a lot. Yeah, uh, and it was that's e that's easy money there. Yep. If you if you ever play there, I like games. I like it when we do stuff that's real weird, but you can just go play it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Any time because I didn't have to struggle to try to figure out how to play this stuff. Now, I will, also you can just say, "Hey, audience, go play this stuff if it's worth it." Right now, I will say this: uh, something you're going to want to know if you if you're emulating this by default uh, to start these games, you have to use the keypad, which would have been on the uh, Epoch Super Cassette Vision. And since and so they what they've done on the emulation is they they basically transferred that keypad onto your keypad on your computer on the number pad so if you, a number pad so if you don't have one which I don't yeah well you had you have to change that in main but yeah. I mean uh, you just hit uh, I believe it was zero is the select button and you can get going yeah so. I was very confused for I I did the whole hit every key thing yeah. And because uh, neither, none of my computers have number pads. Yeah, well, is I, that crazy or is I that crazy? I used that keyboard right there, and it didn't have one either. And so yeah. I was just like, "What am I doing?" But I, did, I ended up just going and getting yeah. this and, and downloading it. So I like the I like the fact that mine is pretty nice on here. I think it's kind of cool. So, anyways, you had a pretty broad uh, 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 range of games on here. It wasn't a ton of games, but you had some. And I like the fact that they're getting some, uh, you know, some home some homebrew. Sure. So we looked at this uh, line up here, thirty or so games. And picked out a couple. Now these are going to be the two we picked. I'd say, did you have any rhyme or reason behind the one you picked? Or yeah, you... I was hungry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, I and, and and I picked one that I sort of had heard. I knew something about. So that's what I went. That was pretty much the reason behind it. So we'll get into it. But I'm going to let you lead the dance this week. What did you uh, select this week to give a shot? When I was flipping through the list and I saw pop and chips, I was like, I'm in. There you I, go. I, I like soda. I like chips. I'm gonna play some pop and chips. Yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I liked them until now. But go, go ahead. This game was great. I didn't say nothing. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, here's what's not great about pop and chips. There is no history. It has all been lost to time. I couldn't find who officially made this. Uh, it, it looks like it was uh, published by uh, the actual Cassette Vision company, Epoch. Ep uh, Epoch. Yeah. Um, but as for uh, 
who developed it. Uh, there's even conflicting information on when it was released. Some people say 84, some people say 85. Now, uh, this did get a dual release. <clears throat> this was released uh, in Japan as the uh, 16th game, and it was released in Europe as the 14th game because this the system had the numbering system on all their games. I shouldn't mention that. Like I said, about <clears throat> only half the games that were released got the European Yeah, the there, there were 16 Japanese titles, or 16 European ch- titles and 30 Japanese titles. Right. Uh, so there is super, super limited information on this. It was hard Man. to find videos. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find manuals. I found one picture of the back of the box and went through the effort of translating it to see if I could pick up what the story was. Uh-uh. Um, so the best I can figure is in the story, <clears throat> you are you play as Pop and Chips, which appears to be a husband wife, maybe a brother sister, maybe both. I don't know. They they have fondness for one another, and they uh, are trying to save the fairies <laughs> that have been uh, a captured in fruit um like yeah. i said it was it was a it was a uh, google translate from a japanese story that probably didn't make sense in its native language so it was a little all, all over the place <laughs> so what do you do in pop and chip you play as pop or chip or you can play this uh simultaneous as pop and chip or you can play four player, which is really just simultaneous, and they take turns. But uh, very interesting that they gave you those options. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> when I saw the four player pop up. I'm like, how yeah. is that going to work? Um, you play as Pop. You're trying to save the fairies that are captured in fruit. Uh, you do this by going over a block that has fruit on it. You press down on your button and you break that block, and it sends the fairy flying up into the air. And you've got to catch the fairy, and that saves them. So it goes up into your little saved okay. character place. Because, yeah, that that already, we're just, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I had no clue what was happening. This is a single-screen puzzle game. A la Bubble Bob. Or no, it is nothing <laughs> like Bubble Bob. I'm just Bob. saying, that it's the it's, same sort of it's thing. Mo- it's, if it's, like anything, it's sort of like Load Runner. Because when you break these blocks, uh, <coughs> the bad guys will eventually come back and repair them. So, But they don't fall in the hole. They just kind of repair them. You can kill bad guys by dropping blocks on their head. <coughs> if they're walking down a ladder, some ladders you can kick left and right. Yeah. And if they're on the ladder and you kick it, they fall down. Um, <coughs> you can grab a salt shaker, which apparently they don't like because they start... <laughs> That whenever you salt them, they start flying around the screen. Yeah, the bad guys can kill you at any point they are on screen. So even if you send them flying around the screen, if they run into your character, they will kill you. I thought that was a weird choice. Um, That's like if you pop blue and blue this in the face and Popeye, and as he careened up the wall, he <laughs> smacked on the way by. And killed you. The other enemy in this game is this huge hawking king version of the bad guys. And when he comes on screen, he just walks in a straight line from point A to point B. And and he he is so big that when he walks, it shakes the entire screen. Awesome effect. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, when he comes on the screen, you're like, oh, crap, here it comes. Now, monster. you can kill him just as easy as you can kill everyone else, and you get more points well, I for tried it. tried to do that. Uh, you can get him with the salt shaker. You can drop blocks on his head. <laughs> he doesn't climb up ladders, so you can't use that trick. Something else about Pop and Chip that blew my mind until I found out, you can it screen wraps. Yeah. So you can go off the right-hand side of the screen, and you'll peel on the left-hand side of the screen. That's needed for some of the puzzles in this. Oh, actually, I like that. Um, it's unusual for a game like this. This game is hard. Yeah. It's hard, and the puzzles that I got to... How far did you get in this, Aaron? Did you get off the first stage? Horrible. I somehow got to the second stage one. Okay. I don't. I literally... I had. The, I could not understand what the concept of this game was. I just really? sat there. I, I was like, what is this? If, if I had to pick a game that it reminded me of, and I mean just sort of barely, it would be Mr. Deuce Castle. Mr. Deuce Castle, where you, kick the, where you kick the stairs back and forth, where you drop blocks on the guy's heads. 
Yeah. There's stuff embedded in the blocks, but that was that's and and I thought, okay, I'm gonna attempt to do this like Mr. Deuce Castle. Yeah. No. I don't know what I was doing. I didn't. The fairies were. I mean, I knew I could get points from getting them, but I didn't know what, what was happening. I wasn't sure how to finish the game. I didn't know what the house meant. I didn't know how to finish the level. The only time I ever finished it, a couple times I did, was just strictly out of sheer luck. Yeah. To finish the level, you have to collect all the fairies. <clears throat> and that means actually getting them free of the fruit. And when they go flying up, you have to catch them before they hit the ground. Now, there is an unfortunate bug in the emulation that if you let the fairies bounce, uh, it will crash the emulation. Now, I don't know. I'm guessing... I never had that happen once. Really, I had to have it a lot. But I played this game a ton. All right. So, there's 30 <laughs> stages in all. Oh, wow. Uh, you, I, I played and got to four. All right. Which sounds like an abysmal showing, but it's actually, I, I'm pretty proud of myself. No video of this online outside of the demo plays. Uh, I might actually go back and record some of this. This is a game that... If you give it 10 minutes, you're going to hate it. If you give it an hour, you're going to love it. Okay? Yeah. It's a fun puzzle game with fun elements. It controls well. Everything makes <clears throat> sense once you learn what's going on. You know, you have to knock the fruit down, save the fairies. Uh, after stage two, there's a bonus stage where the king and his minions uh, shake down a fairy house. And all the fairies go flying. And you have to you have to uh, grab them before, as they bounce along the ground. That was fun. Uh, great game. I really loved it. And this has two very special elements that's uh, only found on I think two other games on the uh, Super Set Vision. Yeah. Thing one, it has a level editor. Yeah, I saw that. And it's that. pretty <clears throat> good. Uh, it allows you to either start with a blank slate. Or modify a level that already exists, and you get to put all the blocks where you want, uh, where put the bad guys where you want. Even has where you can set where player one and player two starts uh, if you're playing like a co-op thing. And on the back side of this cart, there's a place to put a physical. Like double A battery. That was my next question. If it's because I knew I read that some of these cards had battery backup. Yes, but not most people when they hear battery backup, they think it's soldered onto the board. It's yeah. not something you have access to. No, this actually on the other side of the card has where you can put a physical battery to save your high score in those levels. I wonder how many of those cards got mauled after they left the battery in there for a couple of decades. I'm gonna get well. I tried to price this thing, yeah, and uh, it's not for sale anywhere. But the prices that it <clears throat> did were on sale for uh, the cheapest. I found it was ninety bucks. Yeah, uh, can you imagine that? And you know, Epic. One of the things I, I read was they were ahead of their time in a lot of areas. Yeah, and they they did a lot of stuff that predated all the other big guys in terms of their console, the way they did stuff. So that, that's that's pretty neat that even uh, that they would have the battery back. Well, because I mean. It, I'm trying to think. You, you're a, a console expert. Do you remember the first get bunch of games where you saw battery backup? Yeah, the Nintendo had tons of them. Now, and then, but I mean, none of them had a battery like that. <laughs> right? That's a much no, no, no. They were all internal batteries. Yeah. Right. But I mean, this this seems like a better sort of better plan, with the exception of when you switch the battery out, you lose everything. Well, I mean, that's understandable. But I'm just saying it, it, that seems like an okay plan. To yeah. Me because yeah. I, at least I like that it. way. You know, you can put a fresh battery in there. You'll get you the best battery you can find. It'll probably last for a long time. Yeah, you know? I, I would think so. So, and what did you think about this before I, I, I go on about how awesome it was? I didn't. I didn't understand it. Like I said, I didn't. I didn't. I'm, I'm not lying. I, I've played it. I spent some time with it. I was confused and sort of scared, and then I quit. I went home. <laughs> I didn't get it. So I didn't understand the concept of this game. I didn't understand what you're supposed to do. And much like yourself. I staggered forward to try to find out what to do, and the only things I could find out about it were the most general statements about the game. Yes. Like, this is a game for the Xbox. It's like, this ain't helping me, pal. I need <laughs> yeah. tips. Yeah. Tips, son. And there are no videos. Like you said, they're really, if anybody doing it, they're just a minute, two minute clips. Well, they're the intro <clears throat> loop. And so that doesn't do it for you. You know, I, I, so, uh, and I had a similar problem with my game until I started delving into the land of Japanese YouTube, and then I, I had a, be, a bit of better luck. I love this game. You love it? I love this game. I would rank this a go figure out how to run an emulator to play it. Or just go to archive.org. Right. Don't figure out anything. Um, 
I'm not saying go buy a console to buy the game. I think that'd be very difficult. I would love, I would love to own one of these. I really would. Well, uh, however, uh, the game is super interesting. It's super unique. The options you have when you're moving stuff around, you're kicking the ladders, you're, you're busting the blocks down. There are bombs that when you hit the bomb, it destroys an entire row of bricks. And how that uh, affects the level is very interesting. The visuals are clean. Uh, the controls are tight. It really surprised me. When I first mm. loaded this game up, not knowing how to play, I struggled. I, I couldn't, I didn't, I knew the ladder should move because the way the graphics yeah, were, but I couldn't bar. make them do it. Yeah. <clears throat> I couldn't figure out what to do uh, with the block. I thought you had to kill all the enemies, but then the enemies kept coming back. Mm. I thought maybe you had to kill the, the big guy, and I figured out how to do that. The game does not help you in that regard. However, once you start, you learn what to do. I played this thing for hours. So you're calling this a win. <laughs> this, I, and I'm not going to dispute you because, again, I didn't play it enough to understand what was going on. Now maybe you could, that you've told me what's happening, I can get have some idea what's going on. I thought this was a huge win. This was not <sighs> Yeti level win because by the nature of the beast <clears throat> being a puzzle game, although it does let you select stages, so, you know, I have conquered stages one through three. So if I skip to stage four, I don't feel like I'm cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did. I, I jumped around to some of the later stages. Holy cow, they get complicated. And it, it is a puzzle game. It is a puzzle game. It's, a, it's an action puzzle. If those are your bag, you got to check this one out. Well, we did have a <laughs> uh, listener review from our good buddy Graham W. Vepke. I know Graham's going to love this. He says, uh, this is a puzzle platform type game, which took me a little while to figure out fully. Yep. Me too, yep. Graham. Yep. Uh, and once you understand the game, and he's got this underline, it's almost a gym like Yeti. Yes! Yeah, I knew Graham and I would be <laughs> on the same wavelength. Well, playing is pop. You need to rescue the trapped children or chips which were taken away from your family and placed inside blocks, which are guarded by enemies. So he says they're your, they're your kids, is what he says. Now, the the game, back of the box ooh. says fairies, but they do look like little babies. The so game has elements of Load Runner and some other yep. ladder-based platform games where you can push ladders, climb them, and fall down with no injury. You can find a salt shaker, which allows you to chase away the enemy, kind of like a power pill. There's a giant king enemy who shakes the screen and causes you to fall if you were at the wrong place at the wrong time. The art is cheerful, so is the music, and me and my youngest love this game, but my eldest preferred Lupin, 8 out of 10. Yes, I 100% agree with that review. I'm glad that someone else sees the vision, sees this for what it is. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. You're really you're fired up about I, this one, aren't I you? I knew, see, I knew, I knew going in you were going to hate this. I didn't hate it. I just, I was not ready for it. So, with that out of the way. Yes. I was tasked with picking a game. I looked over this library. You know, normally I'll, what I'll do is pick an arcade uh, uh, get port, something safe. But I went out there. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Let's get crazy. And so my old college anime roots kicked in when I chose Lupin 3 or Lupin the Third. Uh, <clears throat> so before we get into Lupin the Third, the game, yes. let's talk about Lupin the Third, the character. Okay. All right. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Lupin Third. He's the grandson of a of a uh, world class thief. Yes. And so, of course, Lupin has to go down that road too. And so he's sort of the uh, he's sort of the better version. He's a goofy great thief. And so he has all these adventures. He's basically part of a. It was a, a Lupin Three was a manga uh, that first appeared. Get this, friend. Lupin they made his debut. In 1967. Wow. I would never. I, I, would, I would have never guessed that far back. I knew he'd been around for a while. Yeah, I did as well. Um, he's had six animated TV series and eight uh, released animated films. <clears throat> he's a very popular guy, and he's still cooking to this day. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, he's been around for over 50 years, and he just got a sixth anime series that debuted in 2018. So basically, he's a guy who just robs stuff and is perpetually chased. Now, he's a charismatic thief, and he's wacky, and he's got a partner that's also wacky. He's constantly chased by this uh, police, uh, his, this uh, police chief guy. Constable, that's always, yeah. Oh, yeah. So 
if you're not into anime, you may have still seen uh, Lupin because yeah. he was the He's very subject. Cultural. He was the subject of the laser disc game Cliffhanger. Yes, uh, Cliffhanger, which I, why they didn't just call this Lupin the Third the game because it, all the footage in it's from the Lupin <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've ever played the laser disc game Cliffhanger, difficult game mm -hmm. by the way. It's one of the games where you actually he got buttons for his legs and and, and hands, I believe. I think you got four, it's four or three buttons. Anyway, it's been a while. You uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, you basically make him jump or duck, which really you're just you know manipulating the video. But it was that's a that that's not the first time I'd saw Lupin, but I got intimate with him because that game it sort of has a lot in common with this game. There's a lot of scenes of Lupin running through sewers and stuff, and <laughs> that is this <laughs> so game. Go. Period. So he. You would think right there uh, that uh, uh, this right here would be a ripe for a game, and ripe it was. And so, lo and behold, uh, Lupin Three, the super cassette version, came out. Now, <clears throat> this right here shocked me, Brent. Now, this game came out, and it turns out this is actually the very first Lupin console game. Really? <laughs> yeah, and of course, he's appeared many times uh, since then. So I thought that was interesting. So um, this came out in 1984, published and developed by Epoch, which apparently they were doing a lot of their own stuff uh, back in those days. I'd be interested to see who else actually worked on them. I, I don't think anyone did. Now, at, at one except point, maybe this arcade port. At one point, this was going to be known. The game was going to be known as Lupin Three: Escape from Barcelona Cave Strategy, but they just, which that sounds like a Japanese title. They just got, they dumped all that. So. What we, but what we can gather from that is that you, this takes place in Barcelona, uh, in the sewers and caves under Barcelona. We can just go down that road. So what is this game? Well, <clears throat> you played Lupin, who has just pulled a heist. And on the first level, you see Bank. And you see Lupin come rolling out of there come, and go down the ladder and enter the sewer or yeah. the drainage system of wherever he's at. We're going to say Barcelona This game, it, it's in some ways, this game is a, an early... Predictor of the endless endless runner type. <laughs> it is. It's, a, it's exactly what it Except is. Except it has an end. But uh, in the first, it, what you got is you're a loop. Now you've got uh, uh, some moves down the sewer. You're effectively continuously running from the left and to the right. Now in the first stage, you're running because there's an alligator that's coming to eat you. Yeah. And so you're running as fast as you can to the right, and it scrolls. <clears throat> and it scrolls you, very well, by the way. It runs, uh, it, it, the uh, brickwork is sort of pink as that you run through. And Lupin has to negotiate his way through the sewers. Now, in the sewers, of course, what do you got down there? You got your alligator. And, of course, you've got the bats down there. You got to have those. <clears throat> you also have uh, things that float down in the water that are in the sewer. They'll hurt you or kill you. And you also have bombs that, if you touch, they won't kill you, but they'll go off in a few minutes after or a few seconds. Yeah. After if you, you stick touch around, them. they'll kill you. Uh, and of course, you also you have uh, treasure goodies. Uh, well, I guess people flush their rings and stuff down the toilet, <laughs> be my guess. And so the 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 neat thing about this is there's a cross section of the sewer from you running from left to right, and then you can see what's going on above you. And what's going on above you is uh, is your enemies up there. Freaking out! He's got his he's got his pal throwing like logs down the sewer drains at you. Different things you. depending on yeah. the level, yeah. And uh, he and so he and so you've got to, you can't leave effectively because there's ladders that you normally could go up, but there's always a cop station, right? There. And occasionally the cop car will whiz by, and you can hear the nee, 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 the siren, yeah. which is definitely did a good job on that. Uh, when you get when you hit something, if the bomb blows up and gets you, the alligator gets you. You hit a you hit a bat. Uh, then a you, small mound of dirt. You fall over, and then the the cop comes up and arrests you. They have a close up of of uh, loop and space going like. Rah. It's classic. <laughs> yeah. Like oh darn. <laughs> Something else I like with this game is amongst the things that he can do is punch. So you get the opportunity, the rare opportunity to actually fight back against these bats by punching them, which is great. You can punch other stuff too. Now, this game is really four separate levels, and I'll use four. Really, the fourth level is not very long. There, you've got your bricked sewer level. Then you go into sort of a, I would say, uh, 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 it's like a, almost like an underground, like dirt a cave. Tunnel. Yeah, yeah, let's go with cave. But it's more dirt looking. <clears throat> this level has you avoiding uh, 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 holes and also 
boulders, but yep. you can't you can't punch the boulders. And on this level, there's no alligator chasing you. You've got you're being chased by police, yep. actual like uniformed cops. Now the one thing Lupin can do occasionally is turn around and punch the crap out of the cops. <laughs> yep. Which I thought was pretty. <laughs> can't punch the alligator, but you can punch the cop. Right. Right. So the third now, and when you get to these levels, there's sort of like a door that that he'll run out. And I, one thing I do like is when he gets to these doors, he just runs past whatever obstacles are left unscathed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, the third level is the sort of underground, uh, subterranean, like jungle, jungle tunnel. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the, the big star of this is these giant snake heads that lower up, lower down. And then there's something he jumps over. I couldn't, is it turtles? Or did you couldn't figure out what that was? It, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a turtle. It was almost looked like a groundhog yeah, type it, animal. Some, there's some kind of little animal he has to run, run past it. Uh, or jump over. Now the, uh, the the villains, like the bats, especially, they come at different levels. So you're sometimes you can different run heights, right? Sometimes you can run under them. Sometimes you can punch them, but sometimes they're just below your hand, to where you have to jump them. Yeah. Now Lupin also has another move where he can, and believe it or not, he can run pretty much at full speed while doing this. He can duck down, crouch, and, and yeah. He, and, but he can keep running. The, yeah. the only problem is when you're crouched, you can't jump. Right. And so you have to basically. Get back up to play, and so you don't. It's funny that was a good move, but I was always afraid to use it for too long because I knew there'd be something coming down the pike that I'd have to jump over. It. So this game's almost entirely timing based. It's funny. I read a lot of people saying that this was like a a, a clone of of uh, Pitfall, right? And I can see why they'd say that in terms of the way it looks, but yeah. I'm guessing they didn't play it. it so that's not. Yeah, it's nothing it's not like great. Pitfall. I mean, well, I mean, it, it, I can sort of see it, but it's. It, it, How often do you attack things in Pitfall? Well, that's true. And, I mean, that's my point. It's not really... I mean, I don't know what you... Would, like I said, it's more like an endless runner. This is an endless yeah. runner is what it is. So, when he gets through the jungle portion of the of the game, <clears throat> he goes into this, uh, r- uh, this area where there are these, like, electric shield things skipping around in front of him. And he's got... And, of course, for some reason, now he's got a gun. <laughs> where was this gun? <clears throat> I'd be clipping alligators with this sucker. <laughs> Uh, so he, he shoots these points on the shields to lower them. So you have to basically aim your shot and shoot. And then and, and the whole time there's a spiked wall coming at you from behind and the and the police you've got is pushing the wall at you. <laughs> so when you get through these shields, Lupin runs out the runs out the of the level. And the last thing you see is Lupin getting into his cool car. And he's got this cool like it looks almost like a phantom, uh, this car. He gets into the car and the police chief's running after him, and the, and then you see the police car come up behind him, and and uh, Lupin throws a bomb up and blows up the car, and the chief's like, "Oh, <laughs> screwed!" And then the thing re- repeats, and it gets a little bit harder. Now, <clears throat> when you select your level in this, you've got uh, amateur or professional, yeah. right? And then you've got one or two players. Now, I meant to ask you this on your game. I sure. saw there was a ga- there was A and B. What what was that? Do you know the difference between A and B in terms of the game? I, I don't. I don't. I always played A. On this one, amateur and pro, as far as, far as I can tell, you got way less men. On yeah, pro. less lives. Like less. on amateur, you get a ton of men. I think you get seven or nine. Yeah, so or... you, when you, and I, trust me, just play that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need it. Now, uh, this game is not easy, but it's a game that if you play it enough, you will get better. I played it quite a bit, and I was able to get all the way to I didn't get all the way to the end. Did you get to the end? I made it to the end of jungle. I got to the jungle level and yeah. I could almost get past it, but unfortunately I kept getting murdered. There are parts of jungle that are, are a bit unfair. Yeah, well actually the boulders were really tough too. I lost a ton of guys on that too. Because those things come bouncing down. Sometimes you have to duck them. I mean, it remind that part reminded me a little bit of jungle, jungle king. Or, yeah. yeah. Where you have to d- jump on the boulder level. Uh, this was a pleasant surprise to yes. me. Because I had been, I, this is what happens when you read stuff without playing it yourself. I had been, I had not heard great things about this. And it also, with everybody saying it was like a pitfall clone, I just assume, and, you, and when you see just a still shot, you're like, okay, at what point are you going to go up the ladder and swing on the vine? You didn't do any of that stuff. It all takes place underground. Uh, the Lupin character is well represented. He's yes. goofy. He runs like a crazy, you know, arms and legs type crazy guy, which is what he was. Uh, the 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 bad guy cop is, I mean, just the way I remember him, he's got the dumb coat, the hat. Uh, the uh, the uh, event that you're doing is exactly stuff that would be in one of these cartoons. I yes. mean, it's exactly. Yep. The sound effects are good. The cop car sounds good. 
you know, Lupin was never really a, sh- a, 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 a show that was for kids. It's more like teenagers or adults. And so the, I think that justifies the difficulty somewhat. Again, I don't think this is the easiest game. It's not. I know it's not. But I think it's one of those games that if you play it enough and get the timing down, you can be pretty good. You also have to learn not to be greedy because they put these little bobbles and stuff in, in these tunnels to try to get you to buy it, go and jump. and then. But that's how they get you. So it's real difficult. You have to, I have to have a completely clear area before I try to go after these things because they are <laughs> they're, they're too tough to get. Uh, this was supposed to get released in France, and I'm not 100% sure, that, and nor were the people that uh, talked about it, weren't sure if this actually got a release in France or not. I'm going to guess that it did because it was number six on the European release really? thing. If it would have been at the end, I could see where maybe it wouldn't have gotten released. But being number six, I bet it did. Well, the the little blurb I read said uh, it was advertised in France, but it was unknown if it got released because there were concerns over the legality of the name. So mm-hmm. I don't know. So your, your mileage may vary. Um, what did you think of this one? I thought that Lupin, for just a run and punch type of uh, mm. thing, he is very well animated. Yeah, he can punch up. Uh, he can punch standing. He can punch crouch. He can punch yeah. jumping. Uh, the punching gave gave you. It made you feel less like a little ween. I mean, you can actually do something. That that goes a long way. And you can also uh, in the later stages, the alligator is not a huge threat because if you stop moving, the alligator moves at just a crawl. Yeah. Um, so the you don't. Cops are much worse. You don't feel very threatened until the cops. But you can punch the cops, and in fact, you can punch the cops. To where they're under a bomb, drop the bomb yeah. on it, and it will kill them. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they literally they go away for a while. Yeah, as long as you're out of the way too. That's, that's the um, thing. Yeah, the cops. I thought the cops were they were they they close a lot more. But of course, again, you yes. can smack them. So, but yeah. I mean, still, there are a threat if you get in a in a bind. Yes, I agree. Uh, I, I thought the the ramp up on difficulty was pretty smooth. Uh, level. Two is harder than level one, and level three is harder than level two. The uh, uh, gameplay itself is pretty tight. The game will screw you every once in a while by putting bats in a pattern or uh, have a log rolling in a pattern that you can't get past or is overly difficult to get past one or the other. You'll find your points where you have to run backwards. Absolutely. That's a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, But for a runner, for what it is, this is something you can set down and play for 15 minutes and and feel like you've seen the game. Or you can play it for longer and try to get good at the game. Yeah. There are two aspects of it to, that I, I super hated. Okay. Okay. Aspect one is when they give you a, a set of enemies or patterns that you can't avoid. And you pretty much have to take a death. Point two, which is probably even worse, is every time you die... You have to watch the cutscene of the cop running from the that, back that, of the tunnel, yeah. arresting you, and you get in your little sad face. Yeah. And it takes like 12 seconds, yeah. which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've got a nine players to go through, and if you die and then you immediately die again, it feels like an eternity. You're, you're dead on. You can't skip that, it. That was a major pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, it's one of those scenes where the, whoever put this together did a great job with it. And so you're just going to see it every time. Well, I mean, it's it great, but after a while, it does, it's real old. If you know? they played it once when you lost your final life, it that would have been would be fine. Better. And just the other times, he just falls down, rubs his head, and then the game starts it's, again. You know, it's funny. This had this exact same problem happened in Cliffhanger. Whenever you yeah. died, you'd have these long <laughs> scenes where your guy was getting killed, and you had to wait through him. Remember when he'd get hung or he'd get shot? And you're just like, oh, God, just let me go keep going. I agree with that. Or if it made them skippable. But yeah, it would have made more sense if they yeah. done it on the last man. Yep. Uh, so that was that was a, a misstep. Something else I'd like to have seen done, I think this would have given the game a little more zing, is that occasionally, of course, you cut your, you can see the entire screen. Like I said, you can see the land. So effectively, there's a huge chunk of the screen you're never on. Yeah. And there are ladders. And so I wonder if maybe that was the plan at some point, to be able to have you go up to the top and do some stuff and then come back down. Yeah. That would make some. Uh, that make give you a little more variety. More variety, yeah. You know, it's very, I mean, like, and then you could put cops at strategic places on top to where you had to go down the ladder, and it wouldn't have changed the game fundamentally because the cops still could have dropped stuff down the ladders from the other side, and that way you could have got you had had a choice as to where you wanted to go. Sure. 
I think that was sort of a misstep. So, I mean, I think there was more gameplay to be had here uh, than, than what they had. <laughs> that much Agreed. said, uh, it's a fun, this is a, uh, you could have, this would have easily fit in any arcade. You could have had, yeah. this would have been something you would have seen and it, you'd be like, yep. Uh, and it's, it's unlike Brent's game, I knew exactly what I was doing immediately. I was yeah. not worried. I knew exactly what uh, to do. I mean, once you figure out what you can and can't touch, uh, you're, you're gold. It does kind of suck that tripping over a small amount of dirt kills you. That does. And that level, I think that level is really tough, but uh, the la all the levels are sort of tough. But really, it's funny, the pink level is by far the easiest, and it's still yeah. pretty tough. So, yeah, there you go. By the way, this stuff, of course, does have uh, support for two people, you know, turn-based people. Sure. So, we got a review on this one from uh, Graham as well. Uh, a running platform type game where you play as loop and a character who is apparently well known in Europe in, in Japan especially. Japan, yeah. You start running from the police and you fall into the sewer where you are met with a crocodile, birds, logs, other obstacles and cops. Along the way you collect diamonds, rings and can drop floating bombs along the way to help you try to escape. It's rather fun but quite tough game. You really only have jumping, ducking or punching as options. And it held my attention. It held the attention of my children for about 20 minutes, and they got further than I did. Overall, a decent <laughs> game, and the punch animation looks amusing at times. I still wish you'd picked Milky Princess, though. <laughs> Sorry, Graham. <laughs> Maybe seven, next round. Seven, seven out of ten. You know, before we before we roll out of the uh, uh, before we roll out of the cassette vision, I did look this up on the eBay. Uh, Brant, I was what, looping on there. No, I mean I looked up. Uh, I did look up Lupin as well. Lupin's going for. You can get a copy of Lupin between fifteen and fifty-five bucks boxed. So you can get a wow. pretty good price. Now get this. Now these are probably all coming out of Japan. You can actually get uh, a, a, a Epoch cassette vision pretty cheap. Uh, How cheap I, we talking? I saw them going for. They were going for under a hundred bucks, and sometimes well under. Sometimes like under, like I saw some going for like fifty bucks. Really? Yeah. And uh, most of the games, I looked at the games uh, uh, on there, and uh, like they were, like trust me, not I saw these go for under fifty dollars boxed. All right. Uh, the games are all over the map. Some games are pretty cheap, and there are some games that are real expensive. And of course, you've got a lot of people that are trying to get trying to score a sweet deal on on by luring some unsuspecting sucker to buy their game. So. Your mileage may, may vary on that. I might have to, I I really enjoyed my time with the Super Cassette. It's, this is another <coughs> surprise. And by the it way, we, before we close out the Cassette Vision, uh, and I saw this a couple places and I wanted to mention it. Uh, Brent mentioned that the Cassette Vision doesn't actually use cassettes. <clears throat> In Japan to this day, uh, game cartridges over there are called cassettes. And it's, and it's because of the epic Cassette uh, Visions and the Super Cassette Visions. Uh, they they are called you know over here uh, we call them carts or whatever but they're called cassettes over there and that's and that's that's the main reason why this is the first thing that came to market that's where everybody picked up the logo the lingo and lo and behold it was meant to be huh fair S enough something else that's meant to be Brent and the you know team. what it is the no oh. it's the wheel oh brother. it's the wheel my friend fire that uh. sucker up. for the wheel we added what I believe is going to be our last uh, thanks for giving. Uh, piece to go into greater detail for a while, and least. that's going to be the Dick Smith, the D <coughs> the Dick Smith Wizard. What a dumb guy you are! What a dumb guy! All right, Aaron, <clears throat> you want to how it a little bit a leg support there? All right, Brent, give her a whirl. What are you hoping for this week? Uh, I, I wouldn't mind a little Dick Smith. None of my business, really. <laughs> uh oh, and what did you get there? Uh oh. Sir? We are playing Sim slash Tycoon games. Oh, right? that could be fun. Sim slash Tycoon games. Now, I believe this was suggested by somebody. I I, I don't want to call somebody out that didn't do it, but I, I, I think it was maybe like Pac Billy or maybe I don't even mean Graham. I'm not sure who, but I mean that was a that was definitely a listener suggestion we put on the <clears throat> on the wheel. So. Sim slash Tycoon is. Do you want to set any ground rules for this? You just got to open it wide up. No, I, what ground? I mean, it it doesn't have to have Sim or Tycoon in the title as long as it is a Sim or Tycoon type game. As you know, it's commonly known. Uh, I am the Tim. The Tim. I am the <laughs> I'm the Sim slash Tycoon master. And by that I mean I don't ever play them. 
<laughs> and I don't ever claim to be good at any of them. So I'm going to cheese this category like you've never seen something cheese. Just don't, don't, don't do another Centurion pinball, please. Listen, that was that was so clever. No one gets me. I can't believe that. Um, we don't want you. We record live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the heart of the South or the North, depending on who you ask. Hurricane West but Virginia. But definitely the East. Yeah. And uh, ish. Uh, <laughs> some we, people do say Midwest. We've got some. We've got uh, some chat here's in, in here with us. <clears throat> hey, you want to sound off a few of these fellas? Uh, yeah, I'll butcher some names. <laughs> We got Roush, we got Pixels, we got Del Monte. No, I do it every time. Del, Del Monte. Monte. <laughs> Del You're Monte. Idiot. You're an idiot. Uh, we've got... Uh, Why do I have you read? Geo's late. We got Curtis. Uh, let's see what lurkers we got lurking in the lurk You're place. the only person I know that calls out the lurkers. You drag them screaming you know what? into the light. They want to be called out. Uh, Amika Bang didn't say anything today. Alfred. Pennyworth. The Why are you trying to read? Uh, I, yeah, I know. Uh, Commander Root. Yeah. Uh, Hamo One. How is it going, buddy? Uh, and some other people. And with... the and the rest. <laughs> and everyone else. Now, if you would like to contact myself or the Brent, please feel Don't. free to contact us at argpresents at mail dot com. Brent. Paul, the official. The Scene official cat. email address of the ARG Presents. We would love to hear your thoughts, uh, your suggestions, your uh, bad-mouthing. It's all good. And if you've got any wheel piece suggestions, send those suckers in because we're Heck always yeah. lucky. And like, just like t- the one we just rolled. We're good to go in that. Uh, you can reach me at... I'm still doing the Twitter, so I'll throw that out there, at the Devil Bunny. Uh, uh, if you're a Twitter type, uh, we would love to hear from you there. Aaron, uh, do, what is your uh, Twitch handle? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm ten underscore foil at Twitch. If you ever see me uh, in the Amigos channel, you can shout me out. Right. Uh, I try to interact with chat during the show when I can. Yeah. Um. So come give us a shout. Uh, also, you can hook, look us up on Patreon at uh, Amigos Retro Gaming. Uh. What else is going on, Aaron? What what events do we have coming up in the nearest future? Well, you know, I believe this is episode ninety six. I believe this of is ARG. Now we've decided we're not going to do any kind of uh, year end uh, New Year's thing. I mean, we're going to still have shows and stuff. But we're not going to do anything special. Uh, I think every show we do is special. Well, yeah, yeah, with you here, it definitely is. But what we are going to do, you know, is uh, a, a, on our one hundredth episode. A, a, which is a, a big a big thing for us, isn't it? We're going to do a look back, I believe, at, at, at 100 episodes of this. And we have, we're not 100% sure how we're going to do it yet, but it'll be some kind of... Yeah, because uh, we're not doing back. that. Oh, we're not doing no. that? What do you want to do? I don't know. We'll come up with something. No, we're doing that. Uh, and, and also, if we if Brent doesn't think we're going to do that, then you'll, the 100 episode will be me hitting him with that folding chair right there until he relents. But we'll come up with something. So there'll be a special 100 episode for sure. Now, you're not going to want to miss it. That's for sure. That's true. Now, in ne- fact, don't miss don't miss uh, 97, 98, and 99, please. Yeah, we need your support. Yeah, and again, we stream live on Twitch, and then these all go up on uh, YouTube shortly thereafter. Since we are still in YouTube jail for our evilness, uh, listen, we'll call this thing off. It's a done deal. Good show. I will see you all next week. He may, depending on how my mood uh, is struck. Uh, so, thanks for joining us. And until then, loop on. Whoop.